Show. We're live at 97.1 Free FM. <clears throat> Tim Conway Jr. And Brian David Whitman, man. Look Timmy at you, dude. Timmy Conway Jr., All man. All right. Look at you, man. Hey, uh, real quickly before we start, I had a CT scan done on my heart this week. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've had one of those in the past. Those are, uh, how'd you do? Well, they said I should be around a, like a 28 to 35, considering my bad habits. Right there, oh, I should it just have went some, off. Your scan just went off. Uh, some hard plaque in my heart. Came back zero, 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 zero. And he, the guy says, I have a heart. My doctor, Dr. Ballin, the best doctor on the planet, said, uh, I've got the uh, heart of an athlete. Really? Do you have the spirit, strength, and endurance of, say, uh, you know, uh, Eli not. Manning? I do not. All right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mine, so I'm going to be around to irritate people for a while. Mine came back, and uh, I have the heart of an 87-year-old. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. So, Well, it only gets better. All right, uh, today, earlier on this station, thank you, Gina. Jesus Christ, a lot of work right How now. you feeling, by the way, after the uh, intoxication yeah, you got a headache? last night? You look like you're, uh, you're really in uh, bad shape there. My, my head has been pounding until about 4 o'clock today. I was in bed. Why don't you take like uh, something like a Tylenol or I even did. a Vicodin? Oh, I, I, I didn't have any. I took two ibuprofen, and the light coming in my window was like... Oof, too much. Uh, Gina bad. got bombed last yeah, night on some... shots. By right. the way, that's worth playing again tonight, actually. But we have st- we have guests we can't. By yes. the way, Brian, thank you, really. Thank you for taking me home. I know that you do not like that neighborhood. It's not an area usually... Did you stop, usually... or did you just jump out of the he car? He did one of those California rolls, but and... it was enough for me to get out. Get but no, act- out. actually, a couple of minutes down the road from her apartment, I actually stopped the car, and I joined a gang. Wow. Yeah, so Look that could yeah. yeah, there was a new tag, uh, graffiti sign, so I didn't know if that was your work. B dub? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Great, great. Yep. Uh-huh. All right, uh, very good. All right, um, but anyway, earlier today on this station, uh, Adam Carolla starts off the day with Teresa and then Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Danny Bonaducci at two to three, and then Tom Likas. Right. And during one of the programs today, the Frosty, Heidi, and Frank show, the a very m- highly rated show here in. Los Angeles. It's a midday dynasty. Uh, they talked about the the evening show. We got some uh, some publicity during the day. Well, because we had we had talked about, they had talked about us a couple of days ago. Frosty, uh, typical Frosty, was throwing an imaginary party, not a real party, but just a fake one. And they were on the air, which was very funny, putting together the guest list for Frosty's imaginary party. And uh, Frosty basically said, "I would be the person he would not invite." And uh, we responded to it last night while playing some of their show. And then they played us playing their show and had some... Where does it end? (laughs) I think it ends now, but it was really funny this morning. All right. Here's uh, a bit from Frosty, Heidi, and Frank this morning, man. Look at that. We had that discussion. I forget what day it was about uh, Frosty's imaginary party. It just came out of nowhere. We talked about it and... We oh, said yeah. you can invite everybody in the air staff but one person, and we went through the whole discussion in the list, and and uh, and that apparently the air staff heard about the show. Oh no! And really? listened, and Conway and Whitman played it on their show, a clip, a clip, <laughs> oh. a clip of ours show discussing really? the the imaginary party for us was going oh, to no. have and who would be on the list. Um, I, I do have some this. clips of their show if you want to hear what they thought so, of of our show. Okay, this talking is, about a party that that you're not going to have. This is all a surprise to me. <clears> I had <throat> no idea this was going on. Oh, There's a little boy. bit of Conway and Whitman talking about uh, that show discussion that we had. Right. Frosty's imaginary party. Right. right. So now this is us right. on their show now being rebroadcast on our show. Right. They're broadcasting right now right. A, a clip of our show on their show. Very good. Very good. So <laughs> no Whitman. Well, I'm saying if you have to cut the list off somewhere, there's people like Whitman I'll, and I'll John Whitman and Jeff. The, the and might what about Carol and Therese? <laughs> Who the hell does this guy think he is with his, uh, you know, oh, he may be, he may be. By the way, buddy, you're not even having a real goddamn party. <laughs> it's a fake party. It's in your head. It's imaginary. Well, that's why I think it stings even a little more. That's why it's so sick to listen to. That's why it's so sick and twisted and perverse to listen to. To hear somebody be so vindictive about the invitation. Invitation list of a phony in your head made up imaginary party. Yeah. What are you gonna wear? I'm not even. I'm not gonna think about that because the party does not exist. You know what? You know why you don't? You don't have to think about it. 
Because you're not going. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh, God. Take, you ain't going, huh? No, I'm not going. <laughs> I, nobody's going. Frosty's not going. You're not going. It's not happening. Yeah, it, but if it did happen. I'm not invited to the imaginary one. If they put together a real one, a, a tangible party, well, then I'm sure there'd be a different list. You know, there's different lists for uh, different engagements. You know, I'm sure I'd be on the list for that party. Now, when, when your friends like Mr. KB, and yes. I don't know who else you hang out with, Nate and the whole crew. Yeah, sometimes Nate. He kind of, you know, he kind of... Uh, when they say to you... He disappeared. I don't know what I did. When they say to you, um, so you're not going to the imaginary party, do you give them an imaginary excuse <laughs> on why you weren't invited? Uh, no. No. What do you tell them? Uh, I, just, uh, I just, you know, let it go. I let it go. Yeah. All right, here we go. More of uh, Frosty, Addy, and Frank this morning. Uh, right here on 97.1 Free FM. So, <clears throat> yeah, you and Whitman aren't really hitting it off <laughs> at all. Technically, oh. we just did the night show. <laughs> Look for a spike in the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Here's uh, another clip. They kept, they kept talking about it. Uh, oh. And uh, Randy Wang, their producer, m- told me they, they talked about it for yeah. a good length of time. He cut it down to like uh, some, some good parts of Frosty you might want to might hear. I'm going to make you feel better right now. Here. Oh, Tim. It's an imaginary invite to the imaginary party. Aw, thanks, dude. You feel better? <laughs> Sounds like paper, though. What about Done. Carola and Teresa? And- oh, God, I, I, totally morning forgot, show yet. I totally forgot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> 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 totally <laughs> forgot. Totally <laughs> forgot. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like Paul Lim <laughs> from Hollywood Squares. We <laughs> 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 forgot. I didn't even buy any dick. We forgot. We forgot. Sounds like Joe Flynn from McHale's Navy. We forgot. We forgot. Parker! There's some Jim J. Bullock in there, too. All right, here we go. <laughs> the imaginary party continues. I haven't bought one one item <laughs> for my party. We forgot. A little bit of Brian Whitman goes a long way. See to my jet. But he's a funny guy. But Tom is there, and if Tom's there, and maybe Tom and Whitman still have that disagreement. But that thing, would be an interesting party. Yeah, but I don't want. I don't want drama at my party. I want a good time. No so Jeff drama. makes it. No drama at my party. Would you believe I haven't even purchased an order? And the party starts in two hours. My party is tomorrow, and I haven't purchased a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> I need oxygen. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh my Lord, Please I... tell me that's all you're going to play. I, I can't them. take any more. Uh, there's a couple more clips. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> 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 Paul Lind and, and Joe Flynn. <laughs> that was, I'm strangely, oddly flattered by that. It was dead on, too. <laughs> oh, my God. How about that? <laughs> Two f- fairly major insults. Yeah. Uh, Paul Lind right. and Joe Flynn. Sure. Um, both rumored to be... Um, yeah, I think Paul openly. Yeah, not the uh, ladies, man. And strangely, Frosty is mm-hmm. flattered by that. Yeah, he's into it. <laughs> Paul Lind and, and Joe Flynn. <laughs> that was, I'm strangely, oddly flattered by that. It was dead on, too. <laughs> oh, my God, Whitman. I love him. Uh, here's, I think, a caller calling into the Conway Whitman show about this. Nate in Orange County, you're on 97.1. Hey, uh, I think it's actually uh, opposite of what you think, and uh, he is in love with you. But he doesn't want the spotlight taken away from him. So. That's possible. It's possible that he is in love with me. You're right. This is it, it is typical behavior of uh, like if you asked a girl in high school who she wanted to invite to the party, the last person she would say would be the guy she's in love with because she doesn't want everybody to think that she thinks about him all the time. Oh, it was something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, that's right. All right. Well, is that possible? It is possible. I mean, if if Frosty is in love with you, it's possible. W- is it reciprocal? Uh, no, it's not. I respect him and like him very much, but I am not in love with him. You're not? No, no, sir, I'm not. Could you find yourself in love with him? No, I don't fall in love with men. <laughs> but if you fell in love with men, would you fall in love with that man? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Tim is the greatest interviewer. He close away Tim Russick. 
<laughs> Larry King got nothing on you, Tim. Oh God. <clears throat> This is good Notice stuff. Notice how he doesn't give up. He approaches the question from a different angle till he gets the answer, I which so, he sees. I so want to hear that first I haven't even heard again. this last clip. Oh, this is God. only 12 seconds long. How long could it be? Right. Let me say this about Mr. Stillwell. <laughs> Please let me say this. I don't want to say or do anything to hurt him because he is obviously already in so much pain. <laughs> 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 and Brian would know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that my is, God. Okay, I'm absolutely Are you inviting stunned. Whitman now? No, because <laughs> we did that show. Well, I'm not going to redo just so the I can show, invite him. But there was a reason. We said, where would you cut the list off? It wasn't invite everyone. It's if. The big yeah, fat if. Everyone but one was Underline the, the word if. If you had to cut the list off somewhere and didn't invite someone, who would it be? So I was forced to cut someone. I didn't want to cut someone. It's like these staff cuts when a, oh, say a radio change, profits fall, and they let 10% of the staff go. They didn't want to cut anybody. They wanted to keep them all, but they were so, you must cut someone. So on that premise, I had to cut someone, and it just happened to be Brian, oh. who didn't take it well, apparently. Oh, my God. I could listen to that first clip all day. <laughs> that was funny stuff. Oh. How did how did Frosty think you were going to take that? The most <laughs> sensitive man, the most sensitive mammal with a penis, mm -hmm. has been told that he's not going to an imaginary party of another on air personality. Right? Did he think I would be happy about that? There is not a more emotional man on the planet than the man sitting on my left. Really, you think so? Yeah, I think. Uh, but I, I'm not saying it is it is Negative. as an insult. I understand that. I'm just saying that you. Are a very emotional dude. Yeah, uh, and I know that about. Yes, me. and you, you know you're, the highs and lows, the uh, uh -huh. you know the crying, the laughing. I mean, it, you're all over the place, right? But you're on a roller coaster. Sure. You know, most people are on a on a well, like a Ferris wheel. Sure. Or the swings, or maybe like a, I don't know. They're on that little train at Griffith Park. Yeah, they just run around in circles. Right. You know, maybe you're, they're on a a little uh, pony ride. I'm on the accelerator. I go forwards and backwards. But you're on it 24 hours a day. I never get off it. Yeah, you're hot. you go up, down, sideways, flips, turns, bubble, bubble, everything. Yeah, well, it's, it's constantly zipping around. It's not easy. I can't but it's tell not. You. But it, it's not a bad way to go through life. Well, it's kind of it keeps me on my toes. I mean, listen. I think most people would rather you know. There's always a line for the roller coaster. There's always the, there's always uh, an empty seat on the train that goes around the park. That's true. All right, and I've got my own seat on the coaster. You own the coaster. <laughs> You're locked on the front seat. All right, chained to it, and you ain't getting off. Sure. All right. Here's the rest of Frosty, Heidi, and Frank talking about uh, the uh, late night show or the uh, evening show. Late evening drive show. Yeah, late yeah, nights. Yeah. John and Jeff would be late nights. We'd be nights. Here we go. Actually, the second one. We're doing this? the poll. Oh, oh, my God. It was the second one. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh. one straight arc. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm oddly flattered that I received so much attention. Please don't do that again. <laughs> but at the same time, when you compare to someone, you, you hope it's, it's someone that's, you know, more manly and more, you know, Idolized. I got well, Paul Lind. He is more manly. And Joe Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> than what you currently are. <laughs> Very true. Oh, geez. Okay, well. Tim and Brian are probably the funniest show on the radio oh, yeah. in America. I hope you all realize that. Totally. So that doesn't wound me like you probably think it does. Mm. But I can tell that Brian got his feelings hurt once again <laughs> by misunderstanding what someone said. Brian is a very sensitive guy. Now, do you see why... If I had to cut someone, again, underline that word, if, if I had to cut someone, why it would be him, would you want him at your party? I actually like walking would. walking on eggshells, ooh, don't say the wrong thing, Brian I will would. go off for the tangent and start doing <laughs> but, imitations of laugh. Paul Lynn. But Brian Whitman is a homebody, and you could, it's safe, he's a safe invite for you, Frost, because I doubt that he would come. He's a, he likes to be at home with his dogs. That's true. There All is. right. Uh, there he goes. Truer words have never been spoken by Miss Hamilton or anyone else. Oh, that is uh, classic, classic stuff. Man. They're such good sports. You know, it's so much fun on the radio when you can, especially on the same station, when we can have that kind of give and take. They laugh at it. We laugh at it. You know, it, nobody's feelings are hurt. It's right. just fun. It's just good fun. But it's the second outing that... Well, I don't want to go into it. Well, the, the first one was uh, at K Cow. At K Cow, where Frosty. But that was also in the. Rebuffed your invitation to see uh, the Jimmy I, I Carter. I think your advance. Eh. 
by invitation, Tim, advance, uh, uh, connotes all sorts of other uh, activities. Well, you did invite him to a dinner and a show. Uh, dinner, uh, certainly a show. But and that, that may have turned him off to the point where he is not even entertaining the thought of inviting you to his imaginary party. But that was also lighthearted proving that uh, if you ever hear me in a scuffle with someone, um, I can have lighthearted a give and take with anybody, especially Frosty. It proves it right there. So if you should hear me, you know, with a, another host on the station by chance who seems to take it personally and lashes out and it, and it has a, a meaner tone to it, uh, you've just heard the proof that it can't be me because look at all the fun I have goofing around with those guys. All right. All right. Then case closed. All right, gang, we got a huge show for you. We have a, 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 a band coming in. Yeah, Strung Out is going to come in. Yeah, do they call them bands? Is it a group? Yeah, Strung Out is a band. They call them a band? Yeah, they're a band. When I think of band, I always think of like high school band. Well, no, but you, yeah. the point is well taken. When you think of band, you think of the Rolling Stones, or you think of Guns N' Roses. I mean, uh, you know, uh, that's a band. Fleetwood Mac, that's a band. Even guys like Lifehouse, that's a band. Strung Out's coming Strung in. Strung Out's a band, but like the Pussycat Dolls are a group. Because they're not that musical, I don't think, is with all, all due right. respect to that woman who listens, who likes me, apparently. Yes. And then at 10 o'clock, we have a psychic coming in, uh, Linda Salvin. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to belch before I gave out her name. Ah, uh, she can deal with but it. But she probably knew that was coming. Right. All right. Um, it is. Uh, so what we do is we're flipping the 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock hours around. So can you follow that gang of flipping? Yeah, flip, we're flipping. program change. Uh, scratch the 8 o'clock hour, put it in the 10 o'clock slot. And drop the 10 o'clock hour down to the 8 o'clock slot. That can o- only mean Those one. are two changes. And that can only mean one thing, then. It is time for the world's greatest setup man to set up this here hour. Brian Whitman, man. All right, gang. I'll tell you what, man. Doing it a little early, man. These guys are uh, doing it a little goddamn early, man. Uh, it's going to be uh, totally up and fast, man. Time to jump on, dude. I said it, man. I Effing said it, and you're effing hearing it, man. 520-9710. Or uh, perhaps uh, uh, you got a, uh, hmm, a triple eight Jones, man. Triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero. Jump on now, man. Anything you want to talk about? Anything you think we should have talked about? It. Come on, man. Jump on live, man. You see my CT scan? God damn it. Man. All right. All right, 520-9710. Anything you'd like to talk about, 520-9710 and 888-520-9710. There you go. Hey, Jerry, what were you and Randy arguing about when we started the show? It was very distracting. I asked you guys not to do I that. I wasn't arguing with him about anything. What, what was, there was he a yelling little, there about? Was a, well, there was a little altercation before the show. There was a little what? <clears throat> There's a little altercation before the show involving somebody else. Who? <laughs> involving who? Certainly not. Involving something before the show. Not involving me. I mean, I can say it if you want. That's all right. Or does it involve someone who works... There was no altercation between me and Randy, though. Does it involve someone who works here? Randy was just pissed. Yeah, Randy was pissed off about something. It involves somebody who works at the station, but not on the show. Yes. I think Uh, I know who it is. All right, all right. But please, gang, the two of you. You oh, no, there was no... Me and Randy are fine. Nothing. Okay. Right. But, but well, I'll, I'll well, need uh, off the air all the D's tales about that. Yeah, but please. I mean, you know, the two of you can't stand each other sometimes, and it gets, it gets irritating. I love Randy most of the time. Nah. Sometimes right. I... He's irritating sometimes. All right. Uh, we're going to do uh, some uh, open phones here, gang. Anything you like to talk about? 520-9710 and 888 520-9710. All right. Stephen Burbank, you're on 97.1 Free FM. What do you want? Hey, Babu. Hey. Hey, I just wondered, am, am I going to be able to hear tomorrow how you guys are talking about them and them talking about you? I, I'm in a time warp now. No, you won't hear any of us I tomorrow. I think it's over. Tomorrow's Saturday, and by Monday it'll be nothing but a distant dream. It'll be all over. No, no, you don't know Frosty. He's going to play that. You watch. Wait, you, he's going to play us responding to that? Yeah, it's going to be them playing you, playing them, playing you, playing nah, them, playing I, I, you. I don't think so, buddy. I, I would, I'd put money on it that it won't be that. I hope so, and I still miss Steckler. I love you, though. I love you. All right, buddy. You're very nice. All right, you take All care right. of yourself, man. All, <laughs> All right. right. There he goes. All right. All right, uh, Manny and Rosemead, you're on 97.1 Free FM. Hey, what's up, guys? Nothing. This is going to hit you guys up with a joke. I was just wondering if I could get a, a son shut up after the joke. Give it what? Son, uh, shut Jesse up. Jackson, Jesse yeah. Jackson saying, okay. son, shut Jerry, you'll cue that. <laughs> per, the caller's, per the caller's request. 
All right. Uh, what did Michael J. Fox say after seeing Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth? Oh, jeez. Wait, do the setup again. What did Michael J. Fox say after seeing Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth? I don't know. Shaken, not stirred. Mm, I, don't, I don't get it. I didn't get that. I mean, I get shaken. I get the shake part, you know. But yeah, I don't get the joke. Dude. I don't get it, dude. I don't know. It wasn't funny. Yeah, <laughs> you're pretty high, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Just for that, you're not going to get your. Yeah, I would. The, I would put down effect. the the comedy writing uh, pencil when you're when you're bombed, dude. Although for some, I think it works. For some, it does, but not for uh, that young man. Yeah. I and you're and, and you're being punished by not receiving your requested sound effect. Oh, Bobo. I just don't get it. Al Gore's movie, oh, Shaken, Not Lord. Stirred. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, if it was like a James Bond movie, that might be, you know, of a Bond, you know, Shaken, Not Stirred, that might be funny. But I, I don't I don't see how, from what he said, I don't see how you get to funny. I don't. Are there a couple of different routes to funny from what he said? I, I don't I think don't there's know. one. Jose in Los Angeles, you're on 97.1. Hello, Tom. Hello. What's up, Tim? You guys rock. Hey, thanks, hey, dude. I, I got a joke for you guys. What, what do you call two Mexicans playing basketball? Oh, here we go. Uh, I don't know. Juan on Juan. Hey. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that's cute. That's cute. It's not bad, I, I dude. Like you, want a, uh, you want something for that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, hold on one sec. We're going to give you a, po- a copy of Lost Planet. All right, man. Yeah, Extreme Condition for PlayStation 3. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, t- totally, Dougie. Hey, do you have PlayStation 3, dude? Yeah, yeah, I got one. All right, hold on. Uh, it's the 20 si- uh, 22nd century. The Earth is in ruins. Are you serious? And mankind must move on. Rated T for a teen only. Yeah. From uh, Capcom. Who? Capcom. 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 It's from our Capcom. All right. Good luck with that, Jose. All right. 520-9710-888-520-9710. It is the Conway and Whitman Show. A big night for you this Friday, including a psychic coming in at 10 o'clock to give you uh, some readings. And after 9 o'clock, Strung Out will be in the studio. Yeah, right now. Big night. We're doing the Tudley Open Phones, It's like better than TV tonight. It is better than TV. If you're high or on pills. Yep. It's Conway and Whitman live on 97.1 Free FM. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway and Whitman Show. We're live at 97.1 Free FM. Totally open phones. Anything you like to talk about, 520-9710. All right, let's talk to Adrian in Sherman Oaks. You're on 97.1. Hi. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. I love you. Thank you, baby. Wait a minute. I love Brian Whitman, too. Well, thank, thank you. He says, thank you, baby. Be dove. Hey, baby. Be, be love. Be no, dub. be dub. As in B-W. Yeah, be dub. Be love, dub. Be dub. <laughs> What's up, girl? Don't you know that we love you in Sherman Oaks? Yes, I've heard, and I thank you. Be dub says, what's up, What's bitch? up, baby? You're the funniest person in the whole world, Brian oh, Whitman. I love you. Yeah. Don't get crazy. Are you a single woman? <laughs> Pardon me? Are you a single woman? Oh, oh, yes. yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> And we're, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We gather around the radio and eat chips and listen to you guys. Wow. We love you. Mm-hmm. It's right around Fulton Avenue in Riverside. Want to come over later, Brian? Oh, I know kind of where that is. <laughs> and what if he doesn't come over? Are you going to get hysterical? Yes, yes, I love you, Brian. Brian, Whitman, I love you. <clears throat> Should I stay calm or... Fulton Riverside. I think I isn't. There, in, I think there's a, there's a pharmacy by Fulton and Riverside, isn't there? You want to meet there, Brian? We'll meet at the Rite Aid. I meet at the Rite Aid. Be dumb rules. Oh, uh, you're very sweet, honey. But I don't think tonight. What are you, what are you wearing, Adrian? Would be a good night. What? What are you wearing? <clears throat> oh, a negligee. Do you want to do it, huh? You want to do it? Yes, I really do. Oh. <sighs> Well, you know what? Brian needs a little more craziness in his life. No, I don't think I do. Can you hold on? I think. Oh, yeah. uh, hold on oh, one second. Yeah. Get she, that chick's number, or actually just give <laughs> her Brian's address. Mm-hmm. She sounds like a character I used to do for years with Rick Dees called Big Breasted Bonnie. 
So, mm. so, I know it's a great character. So, Jerry, I'm, give her give her uh, it sounds Brian like Whitman's home address. Uh, give her my email. Would you brianwhitman dot com? By the way, anyone who wants to email me, you can go to conwayandwhitman dot com, or you can go right to brianwhitman dot com. Uh, get your emails, uh, and I respond usually late in the evening when I've had uh, a beverage. Maria in Calabasas, you're on ninety seven point one. Hey. hey, um, that was transgender prostitute you're just talking to. <laughs> oh darn it! Why do you have to ruin it? Why do you have to? Why do you have to be such a buzzkill? Well, I'm the real thing. You know, I bought a trampoline after watching the Man Show, and then I got breast implants so they can bounce even wow. heavier. Because I just love Adam Crow. I think he's so hot. He's the best. He is. Have you he's ever... pretty hot too. Uh, Brian is, uh, I would say, hotter. Oh, thank you, Tom. Oh, really? Now, I wouldn't say that, that Brian is hotter than Danny Bonaducci. But I don't think oh. for a hot second that Bonaducci is hotter than Whitman. Bonaducci's <laughs> not hotter than a rock in a forest, okay? Brian Whitman is a hot sidekick. But I don't think for a hot second that Bonaducci is a hotter host than Whitman. <laughs> So or something like that, yeah. right, Jerry? Something like that, Jerry? What, what did the leopard tell the prostitute? Oh, I don't know, dear. Keep the tip. <laughs> hey, oh, that's right. All right, did you, thanks, did Maria. You see, did you see the lobster? Got to run. Get out of here, man. Brian Whitman is a very talented sidekick. Brian Whitman is a better sidekick than Danny is, but yeah, I don't but, think for a hot second that Brian Whitman would be a better host oh. than Danny Bonaducci. Oh, oh Bobo. There, right, right there is where, right there at the end is where some people have said there lies the insult. Uh, I, w- I am not at all insulted by that comment. I think that um, I think that the compliment in the beginning is a tremendous compliment, and uh, I'm happy to uh, take it. There you go. Susan Rancho, Santa Margaritaville. You're on 97.1. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey, I don't think I could uh, beat uh, the past calls. I have a very innocent question. I have a daughter who is eligible to get her driver's license. What should I look out for? How do I know she's not sneaking around? How old is she? How do you know she's not being a whore? (laughs) I don't want to have her turn into Adrian. (laughs) Well, here's what you can do. Uh, uh, A friend of mine... Uh, Dave Harden, who runs that Covenant Mortgage. The best. Uh, I live over by him, near Ladera Ranch. Yeah, well, I'm going to give you his email address. We're gonna, I'll, I'll take your uh, information <laughs> off the air. Because he actually has a service, and I don't know what it's called, mm-hmm. but he has a, uh, a GPS in his daughter's car and knows where she is and knows how fast she's driving 24 hours a day. Does he really? Yeah, but isn't that kind of like Big Brother? I mean, should he, I really do that? Yeah, but you know what? She's still alive. Yeah, but you know what? You didn't have that growing up. I didn't yeah. have it. Uh, the caller, Susan, didn't have it. And we're alive. We made it. Yeah, That's but, what I mean. All right. Well, then don't do it. You know, and then just sit at home up, up uh, late at night and wonder where she is. Would you rather do no. that? No, no, no. You're right. Well, don't you? Well, I think it all depends. And, you know, call us. Uh, you well, know, if she's in trouble, you know where she is, too. We're not Dr. Laura here. But uh, don't you have a strong bond uh, with yeah. your daughter? Do you have a solid relationship? Well, I do, but you guys know at that age what you guys did. I wasn't totally <laughs> innocent. I yeah, told my mom and dad man. one thing, and then you go to another spot. Well, you know, this is... Hey, uh, and... Susan, how old were you when you first had sex? <laughs> my daughter's in the car with me. I was 25. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, call us, hey, call us sometime when your daughter's not in the car so we can get the real age. Okay, my heart's... Beating faster, I will. Okay, but it's it's probably closer to her, her age, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Call Younger? No, no. no, no. Yeah. All right, I well, S- Susan, hold on a second. I'm gonna get your information off the air and give you his email address. Okay. All right, hold on, baby. <laughs> you're gonna sell a product. Yeah. You're gonna well, move, you're gonna move that product. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it, the product name is, but um, oh, it, he'll know. He can tell her. But um, Dave Harden will know. Oh, yeah. It, it, you put it in the car, and his daughter knows it's in the car. And he only has one daughter, and he's got like four sons, right? Five, uh, three got, sons? He's got uh, one daughter and 15 sons. No, he's got Aaron and Zach, and he's got the yeah, daughter. Yeah, and... he's got a whole, uh, Tim, he's got a whole bunch of uh, kids. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> this thing tracks the car. It's a perfect. You know where it is, and, and it, you know how fast she's driving. It tells you on the computer screen as well. It's a great device for a nervous parent. Yes. Thinking about attaching one to my daughter's leg. <laughs> All right, let's talk to uh, Matthew in Norwalk. You're on ninety-seven point one. All right, I got a joke for you guys. Oh god! All right. All right. On what? Nothing. Like me, said, oh god. Uh, I, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. 
right, uh, a, guy, a guy's in a bar, and he goes up to the bartender, and he says, all right, I, I want you to get a shot glass, and I bet you that I could pee in it. From- right, right, right. That's why I said, oh, God. If you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, why did Whitman say, oh, God, after the guy innocently said, I have a joke? Well, yeah, but he may have had a decent joke. But, but I knew the percentages. That's why I said, oh, yeah, God. Yeah, but I think also when, you, when somebody calls up and goes, I got a, go- a joke, you go, oh, God. Then they don't have the enthusiasm anymore in telling it. Once again, my fault. Yes. Yeah. I, so, think, uh, I don't think uh, so. Uh, so, you, so you think you could tell the shotgun horse peeing in the shotgun? Uh, sh- I can tell uh, better glass? than he could. Yeah, I'm sure. You, I'm sure you could. But I don't know if uh, I can uh, make you laugh with it. All right, Mike in Huntington Beach on ninety seven point one. What's up, Conway and Sidekick? I mean Whitman. How hey. you guys doing? Tonight? Hi, Mike. Hey, I got a joke for you guys. Oh God, right? <laughs> Notice I didn't say that because you sound. Right, check this, you check have a this. lot of enthusiasm. You sound like you're ready to go. <laughs> I'm definitely ready to go. How do you keep a blonde busy? I don't know. Oh, oh, uh, I know. Go ahead. Put her in a round room and tell her to sit in the corner. Oh, oh. Are, are you are you mentally retarded? Oh, kind of, sort of. I mean, have, have you seriously? Have you been in an guys. accident or something hit you in the head? Uh, a couple of them. A couple. Uh, of them. Do you wear headgear? Do you wear protective headgear? On occasion. All right, man. We'll put it back on. Um, uh, put on the uh, gear, I man. I joke. Round uh, room and tell her to easy. sit in the corner. Sex time. Ah, oh, Bobo. Uh, uh, you got the walk. joke. A sex time. Adrian, uh, I, Adrian called me from at Riverside uh, in Fulton, and she was ready for sex time. Okay. All right. It is uh, open phones. Anything you like to talk about? 520-9710 and 888-520-9710. And if you're a Strung Out fan just waiting for the dudes, they're about to have, not even a half hour away here on 97.1. And if you're strung out, keep listening. That's another good idea. All right, it's the Conway and Whitman Show. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. We just got back from break! Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway and Whitman Show. We're live at 97.1 Free FM. Strung out's coming in at 10 o'clock. Or 9 o'clock. And then 10 o'clock. Um, strung out's coming in. Uh Mrs. Strung Out's coming in. Linda Salvin. So we got Strung Out at 9 and Mrs. Strung Out at 10. Nah, I'm just BSing her. Yeah, we, she's a good... Uh, uh, Linda? Linda. Is she outside? She's down by the parking structure. Just put your... put uh, the, the lever will come up. Just put the ticket in that we gave you last weekend. Last week. Last week. No, no, All right, just turn her no. off. Turn her shit. Linda. Let security handle her downstairs. Linda, please. All right, Linda Salvin's coming in, man. Look at that. All right, let's talk to Dave and Ventura. You're on 97.1. Hey, guys, how you doing? How are you? Not bad. Hey, I wanted to tell Whitman also, I'm a big fan of his impressions. I think the guy's really, really talented. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you, sir. Seriously. I, in fact, I would love to hear that uh, like the baby like us, uh, that thing you did where he was going around the studio with uh, that guy that got in trouble with the... Uh, oh, with dude. Imus. Actually, oh, dude, that yeah, we have that on the audio. Play it was, that again it was, sometime, will you? Yeah, it was sped up or speeded up. Sped up? Sped up, I think. Sped up. Uh... Actually, you know, Tom said he even liked that. Is that right? Did yeah. He? All right, let's go ahead and uh, um, Jerry will find it. We'll play it before the end of the hour. I appreciate it. Anyway, right. what I wanted to ask you about was, uh, uh, what do you guys, I was wondering if you guys felt that uh, Howard Stern's move to satellite radio was successful, either for him or for satellite radio. Uh, I think it was successful for, for both, but I'm not sure if they have the money to pay him after his contract's up in 2011. Right. I, yep. think, yeah. I, th- I, think, I think he's coming back to radio and maybe even you know this station. I think that he is uh, – I think that he made a, a fi- the financial decision that anybody would make. So obviously for him, God bless him, you know, he's made a lot of money and he deserves it because he's a yeah, – sure. and, p- and people talked about uh, satellite radio for the last two years because of him. Right. Who else is on satellite that anyone talks about? Right. He's the only genius in this medium who could move satellite radio. Radios like that. So, uh, in in that respect, a good decision. But long term, um, I don't know if financially, as Tim says, that they can you know continue to pay, or maybe he'll be done in a few years. Maybe he'll just retire with those with that hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars, and he'll just uh, be done. Hey, do you have Sirius Radio? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Um, and that was really the only 
reason that I probably would have went to it. I just, uh, you know, financial uh, priorities. You know how right. it is. Can you imagine, though, I mean, for a moment, Tim, and uh, the caller asked a great question. If you're Howard and you're doing these shows on Sirius and, you know, you're saying F all the time and, you, you know, you're very free to do whatever you want. Right. And then let's just say, as you say, in a couple of years, the model doesn't work out and the satellite company says, we can't possibly pay this contract anymore, Howard. The, the gravy train has come to a screeching halt. Can you imagine how constricted he would feel if he came back to this traditional radio? Well, it's like how restricted and constricted everybody on this station is. I mean, I swear all day long, but for three hours a night, I can't. I mean, I wake up swearing. I swear around the house all day long yeah. at strangers, at family. I just love, I, I just like the, the colorful language. The art of swearing. <laughs> that should be your book. All right. Uh, let's talk. You got it there? All right. Here's um, Brian well, Whitman. Visiting Don Imus well, it, as Tom Likas. Right, because Tom said on the when air. He was 15? You know, I think even younger. Tom said that he went to the old 66 WNBC. He met Don Imus because Tom was a big listener. He's just a little kid. And Imus, Tom said, I will be nice to him. I will not say anything rude about him because he gave me a tour of the station when I was just a little boy. And I'll never forget it. All right, here's Tom. We got the audio of Tom taking a tour of... The Big Don Imus studio when he was about 13 or 14. Imus in the morning, 66 WNBC. I'm going to say, uh, how old are you? I'm 15. I'm oh, 15. I don't know. How'd they get to the station? I, I took train, and uh, I came in here all by myself. Well, then they gave you a tour of the station. I'll show you how everything works. Oh, I would love that. Uh, now, when I call the station, and uh, somebody answers the phone and says, uh, what do you want to talk to the host about? Where does that person sit? Oh, that, that, that person, a uh, phone screener. Sit so over there on a uh, phone on hold. Oh, really? And uh, when I hear you play the music... And uh, you talk and stop talking right before the singers start to sing. How do you do that? Well, I don't just I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I just do it for God's sake. I want to edit some commercials in here. Daily. So all of the commercials are edited in here, or uh, you do some of that. Uh, some of that is done outside the station. No, it's all been uh, 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 inside, right out of here. So how old are you again? I'm 15. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Ivins, for giving me this tour. It is unbelievable. Well, I'm not just that. Uh, I appreciate you listening to the station. I appreciate you coming to the station. Like you. Uh, I just want to apologize. I don't want to say anything. I don't hurt your feelings. I'm watching that basketball team. I'm playing those girls. Tattoos. Yes. Well, thank you for the tour. Thank you, Mr. Imus. No, yeah, I was a six minutes out after the hour. Uh, I have a question. Well, I, uh, damn it. Excuse me. Let's get the hell out of here. When you give the time, and uh, there's a duck sound that says quack quack, do you do that by yourself, or does somebody make that sound for you? Well, that sounds on tape. Oh, really? Uh, can I see the tape? Well, no, you can see the goddamn tape. It's just on the tape. Really? And uh, can I meet the person who plays the tape? Where do they sit? Do they sit by the person who answers the phone when I call in? Well, they sit over there. Oh, really? And uh, they hit all of the buttons, the commercials go on by themselves, or they have to hit the button to start the commercial? Well, I got to have to hit the goddamn button and then the commercial goes on. I decided to go to the commercial, but I don't know. Really? Oh, boy. Is there anyone here throughout the night or just the disc jockey who plays the music? Is he the only one here? And uh, <laughs> is there anybody here throughout the night or just the guy who plays all of the songs? And uh, you play songs that you want to play or is it already determined what you would play? Well, it's already determined. I was 15 years old. I've been giving you a tour this thing. I, I don't pick the music. Oh, so when I call and make a request, <laughs> is that really a request? I mean, can you really play my song or is it already determined what you'll play and what you won't play? There. The Tom Likey Show. <laughs> Deer. Hit him with a deer. Oh, at 15, boy. At 15 years old, he hit Imus with a deer. Chris, you're on 97.1 Free FM. How are you? Hey, guys. Uh, Conway, and uh, we should start calling you Sybil. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I've got, I've got a gr- all these, these jokesters that we're calling with jokes. This is a real joke. Guy walks into a bar. Bartender orders him a, he orders up a drink. Bartender brings him a drink. Guy reaches into his pocket and pulls out a 12-inch piano. A couple seconds later, the guy reaches into his other pocket and pulls out a little pianist. The guy comes, starts playing the piano. Well, the bartender can't take it anymore. The bartender says, you know, what, what's the deal with the piano and the, the piano player? 
the guy says, well, you know, it's a funny story. You know, I found this, this bottle walking down the street, and when I rubbed it, a genie came out. And the bartender said, really, you got three wishes? He goes, no, 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 that's just a myth. You get one wish. So the bartender says, so then what's, what's the problem? He goes, do you really think I wished for a 12-inch pianist? Mm. Mm. No more jokes. Yacht. Mm. No more jokes, gang. Please. Mm. All right. It is the Conway Whitman Show. We come back. Strung Out is going to be here. And then at 10 o'clock, Linda Salvin is going to come on mm-hmm. and tell you what's going to happen in your future. Right. Uh, whether you're going to uh, be wealthy, happy, sad. Mm-hmm. And uh, her, your whole future is in her hands. Well, that might be overstating it. She can totally F you over. Well, that's, don't scare people. Too. All right. It is the Conway and Whitman Show. We're live at 97.1 Free FM.